Now, I was talking about old things becoming new again. Well, what about music? How many times have you heard a piece of music from way back, maybe in your childhood, and now it's a modern hit? I mean, music does get recycled a lot, of course, with a fresh new approach to it, new treatment, all that. But it is interesting. And it's amazing how you go through life, because life is really like a symphony. It expands, and it becomes bigger and bigger, and music is part of that. Well, I think so. That even though I have a universal taste in music, I found that my taste in music has expanded so much over the years. And here's an example. Take a look at this pianist, and this piece of music is so easy on the ear. It's a Chopin piece. I happen to like Chopin. And listen to this woman. This is an outstanding pianist, world-renowned, and she allowed me to tape a little bit of her performance doing this Chopin piece at the Palace on the Water in Warsaw, which is a beautiful palace surrounded by water. It belonged to the Polish kings. So, once again, I would like you to welcome a lady that reminds me very much of one of the students of Chopin in Paris, Eva Osowska. Filling up the senses, no question about it. 
Well, I come from a place called, well, my friend Aussie Jack calls it Australia. And, uh, well, he's from Ningen, which is a country town in Australia. And that's the way he speaks. This is the way he really describes Australia. Well, Les comes from Sydney and from what us jokers call the land of meat pies. Kangaroos. And holding cars. Although that one's just holding together these days. But mates, there's more to Oz than that. We've got the bush. We're the um, other side of Cobo now, and there's rain ahead. Les is doing 180 kilometres per hour. And she said, it's not my bloody car, what's it matter? And I kind of disagree with him. No, the rain, look at that. Coming straight down as we look towards Wilcannia. At this rate, we should probably overshoot and end up in Adelaide, but still, it's a nice <laughs> thought. It's just wonderful. It's just a lovely day here. Do you think we're going to die? Bloody beautiful, isn't it? And get a gander at our beaches. Now, if you like that, it gives the old ticker a start, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, we have great tucker. Mm. Nice little sunshine coast tea bone. Mm. Mm. Good looking chillers. Ute bear and pretty good plonk if you want to be posh about it. Well, Jack's always had a colourful turn of phrase, but speaking of descriptions, we come to the segment I call the Journo's Journal. <laughs> You see, wherever I go, even though I get my world news from satellite or online, I like to look at the local newspapers. They give you an entirely different perspective of what's happening in that region or that city that you're visiting. And this year I did that when I went up to the Sunshine Coast. Well, they call it the Sunshine Coast. And when I got there, and this is in Queensland in Australia, when I got there, it was certainly sunny. You know, the ducks were out. The sun's out. Must be the Sunshine Coast. Quack, quack, quack. You're looking for a free feed, aren't you, duck? Hmm? It's one of my favourite beach spots called Noosa. And, as I say, it was bright enough when I arrived there, but the minute I dropped into the local shops, the heavens broke loose. And they continued right into the night. A fierce tropical storm had descended in all its fury on paradise. Well, there's something really a recurring theme through some of the local newspapers. In this case, this is the Noosa Journal, it's called, and of course it documents several days after the storm, I noticed. The, it was on the Tuesday, and this is on the Friday. Oh, well, you know, they had to get their photos, I guess. But here's the uh, photo of the property damage, and there's a story by, who, what's the byline? It says, uh, Brooke Hargraves, who writes responsibly, that residents, business owners and emergency service workers in Karoi have started the clean-up and are counting the cost of Tuesday's terrifying storms. And he talks about the winds and the type of damage that occurred there. But the caption to the picture, which as you see is a substantial property damage, but no one was actually hurt that badly. And it's called Devastation, Carnage in Karoi. Carnage in Karoi, as storms ripped through Maple Street, tearing off roofs and trees, bringing down power lines. And what's under it? There's a story here, which is talking about real carnage, where people have lost their lives. And that's by Matt Johnston, the same newspaper. And again, we get the headline, Time to End the Carnage. And that's in its right place. But then I look into the paper, and I find another headline. Bullies leave trail of Trevally carnage. And they're talking about fish. There's a lot of carnage in this newspaper. 
Okay, well, let's get away from the carnage in Queensland for a minute and we'll go to Dubai because I flew with Emirates from Sydney across to Vienna uh, to get back to Europe. But I stopped off in Dubai, very futuristic almost looking city, a very modern city, and it appears like almost a mirage out of the sands of the United Arab Emirates. And I'll tell you what, it's more than a mirage to the shopaholics. There are people from places like Russia and from all different parts of Europe, actually, as well as from America and Australia and, and from India, I noticed in particular, who are going for real bargains. And they're there because they have so many sporting events, they put on all these bargains. But it's the malls, the shopping malls, they're bigger than what I've seen in America. In Dubai, there's seven days the publication tells about very interesting things. There seems to be a car-related theme going through this newspaper. And this is interesting. The headline, no license, yet they drive kids to school. Well, no wonder transport officials reveal worrying figures, as the paper tells us. Hundreds of school bus drivers have been found ferrying kids to class in Dubai without having a proper license. The Roads and Transport authorities said yesterday that it had slapped fines on 350 drivers caught without licences or with expired permits in 2011. Random inspections by RTA officers revealed 1,887 offences on buses used by 224 of the Emirates schools. Well, 350 drivers not licensed to drive? They got a point. But... There's more, its headline says, after saying police get creative. Cops are turning high-tech to promote safe driving, reports Sean O'Driscoll. And Sean reports that money will be offered to mindful motorists in Abu Dhabi as part of a new road safety campaign launched by police, the Together Initiative, which will run on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube and a dedicated campaign website, has been announced and aims to get motorists in the Emirate to drive safely. And it talks about offering them prizes, getting them to tell each other off digitally, and even encouraging them to tell the police when they get home safely. So it sounds fairly positive until we come to this aspect of it. Under the heading, Digital Traffic Ticket. This one is for passengers. Imagine you are sitting in a car with a friend or relative and they drive through a red light. Start speeding or fail to stop at a pedestrian crossing. Well, cops are encouraging you to rat on them by picking up your iPad, Blackberry or other mobile device, entering their car registration number and sending the driver a digital traffic ticket that will include the real fine they would have to suffer if they were caught by police, plus the amount of points they would accumulate on their record. It doesn't really count, of course, but it's hoped it will act as a warning to drivers to smarten up. Can you imagine... You're writing to them. The police are looking at what they've done. And this brings the community together. Good luck. That's been creative. Well, it's almost time to go. Until the summer edition. When we'll have a look at South Africa. And we'll drop in on some lines just after they've finished breakfast, which is probably good timing. And uh, we'll spend summer in Moravia. And we'll share some adventures in New Zealand with you. But right now, it's spring. And that's when a young man's fancy turns to love and romance. And I have a very personal story to share with you. And that is that my youngest daughter, Jess, announced to me when I was in Australia that she's become engaged to a wonderful guy. And I'm so pleased about it. That's Mike. And so I've prepared a little tribute for the end of the show, which I'm going to share with you right now. And in the meantime, whatever is happening in your life, just remember, everything's going to be okay. From this moment, life has begun. From this moment, you are the one. Right beside you is where I belong. From this moment on, from this moment. I have been blessed I live only For your happiness And for your love I'd give my last breath 
from this moment on I give my hand to you with all my heart I can't wait to live my life with you Can't wait to start You and I will never be apart My dreams came true Because of you From this moment, as long as I live I will love you I promise you this There is nothing I wouldn't give From this moment on All we need is just the two of us My dreams came true Because of you From this moment As long as I live you this there is nothing